All right, folks, this is Pitching Ace 88, and we are back. We just finished up Case 41, where we finished off the University District. Now, before we do anything, guys, again, like always, please click that like button down below. Show me that you love me, and I'll show you that I love you guys, too. Anyways, let's unlock this, head on to the next district. Oh, discover and solve 10 new cases. I'm going to Maple Heights, baby. You know what this means. As always, I'm going to cross the bridge, but I'm going to need some friends. I'll see you guys in a little bit. So guys, I grabbed some friends, and let's head on over to the next district. Crossing that bridge yet again. Blood and glory. Shh, listen, Inspector Ace, do you hear that? I don't hear anything, Chief. Exactly. Here in Maple Heights, silence reigns supreme. And when you're investigating, I need you to be more discreet than ever. You've come a long way, Inspector Ace. You started out in the bowels of the city before investigating the heart which pumps the economy, then went right into the soul of Grimsboro before heading on up to our city's eyes, set it on its visions of tomorrow. And now you've earned a place in Maple Heights, home to the most important, powerful families of Grimsboro, the founders of this city. The families here have centuries-old reputations to maintain, and you'll see their power at play now that the mayoral, mayoral election campaigns are about to begin. Talking of which, we're going to be late for the mayor's big speech at his garden party if we don't hurry. Are you ready, Inspector Ace? Yeah, I heard there will be cake. Of course. Of course, Jones says that. Anyways, Grimsboro citizens, friends, delegates, it's been an honor to serve you for these past eight years. Hear, hear. Huh, that man's already eating cake before everyone else? Shh. In our darkest hour, we stood strong and kept up hope, and with the help of our fine police department, we vanquished the evil on our streets. But the fight isn't over yet, and if you will let me, I'd like to march one last time into battle and finish what we started. If you vote for me, I promise to finish the dream of our ancestors first started when they created the city. Together, we can raise Grimsboro out of the ashes. Together, we... Oh my goodness, what's happening to Jerry? Somebody call an ambulance. Oh my goodness, that man just suddenly started coughing up a fountain of blood. Your whole career has been leading up to this, Inspector Ace. Go investigate the scene, but remember, this is Mesopotamia Heights, so be discreet. Yeah, be discreet, however, this guy just drops dead in the middle. Ew, all over the cake. That sucks. Okay, limo, victim's body, cake. Uh, I'm assuming his watch is probably right near him. Oh, here's a watch. Lobster is here, and helicopter is here. Victim's body, gold watch. It's shining. Not too shabby. I'll take it. What a waste of... I mean, what a waste of human life. Wow, you're right. It seems as if Jerry started coughing up blood right after eating some of this cape. Are you ready to look through it? Alright, let's wrap up the bat at body before anyone else sees it. We don't want to make the mayor rolls uh, re-election campaign party any worse. And I agree, even though the major obviously can't be considered a suspect, we still need to talk to him. I'll bet you in the last case, the mayor might actually have something to do with it. Alright, so we got 18 hours to go, and I will see you guys back here after grab some stars so I can finish up some of this stuff. So see you guys in a little bit. I'm excited for this uh, district. What about you guys? Alright, let's talk to the mayor about this. I can't believe it. My re-election campaign starts off with a disaster. This can't be happening. I've known Jerry my whole life. Heck, if I got elected mayor for the first time around, it was in part thanks to him. Jerry owned the members only Livingston Club where all the greats of the city would meet up and talk business. He was a pillar of Maple Heights. I don't see how anyone could want him dead. Oh goodness, what if the killer didn't want to kill him but me? Well, you can't know for sure, Mr. Mayor, and that's why we'll send around some policemen to watch over you. Until then, stay away from the cake. You're right, Ace. The mayor mentioned that our victim owned the Livingston Club. Let's suit up and go check it out. Let's go to the Gentleman's Club. Do 
Come on. Okay, so we got fire alarm. A dog vest. What the heck is that? Oh, okay. Cushion. Chessboard. Siren. I don't even know what half these things are. Oh, okay. Chessboard, dog vest, cushion, fire alarm, whiskey glass. Alright. We found one clue. That's not even that many. But I guess we'll take it. You know, Ace, I wonder how we'll manage to get a list of Jerry Club's members now that he's dead. Oh, great idea. We could dust this glass you found for Prince. That will at least give us the identity of one of the members. Or we could just ask. Let's examine this cake first, though. Ooh. Razor blades in the cake? That's disgusting. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you just found some razor blades in that cake, Ace. The blades must have been hidden in the cake while Jerry ate it, and he coughed them back into it afterwards, which means we have our murder weapon. And look, there's something written under these blades, but I can't quite make out the words. You think you could help out? Ugh. That's pretty disgusting. Oh, ugh. This means it, like, cut up his throat. It's disgusting. Wow, there's actually a message. Nicely done, Ace. Not only did you find these blades that are victims, swab, but you also managed to recover the bits of text that were on them. So what's it? He who neglects what is done for what ought to be done sooner affects his ruin than his preservation. It's all gibberish to me, but let's send it written on... But it's written on the murder weapon. It must be important. Let's send it over to Alex to see what he can tell us. Anyways, meanwhile, let's try and figure out who could have put these blades in the cake. Good idea, Ace. Let's head back to the garden party to see if we can find any clues. Oh, we're going back. Okay. Examine the whiskey glass real quick. Whoever drank this whiskey must have been wearing gloves because there weren't any fingerprints, only lip prints, so I guess it's a dead end. Well, you're right. A slip prints are as unique as fingerprints. If you ran these prints through the database, you might be able to identify a whiskey drinker after all. Very curious. Oh, so I'm gonna do it. Okay. There you go. I thought it was C to begin with, and I was wrong. Nope, D. Nope, this one. Whoa. Well played, Ace. So these lip prints you found on the whiskey glass belong to a certain Mitchell Westville. This means that Mitchell's a member of Jerry's club. I think it was time we went to talk to him, don't you think? Heck yeah. I like how everyone's like so prim and properly dressed. It's pretty cool, actually. Alright, what do we miss? And I've found most everything, so this should be a... Oh, well, that's obviously something. Okay, so necklace, monocle, watch, Venetian mask, honey, handbag, oh shoot, oyster, toy brochure. Okay, now there's some things that I didn't grab. Tomato cupid. I don't know where those are. Cupid. Sandwich. I don't know where that is either. Oh, duh, it's gonna be right here. Oh, wow. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. That's for sure. I gotta say, I'm most tempted to tear up this torn card you found it into even smaller pieces to at least make it a challenge for you, Ace. Oh, great. Well, thank you, Jones. You're so conveniently nice. Come on, you know that I'm not good at these, at these things. Ooh, 
Marie Antoinette. Great work, Ace. Why, why would anyone tear this brochure to bits? Those cakes look so yummy. Oh, they were designed by Akito Tanaka. She's so she's the person who made the mayor's re-election cake, which happened to contain the razor blades that killed our victim. You're right, Ace. We can't be so sure Akito is the killer, but we do need to talk to her. Yeah, we do. But actually, guys, I'm going to go grab some more stars and wait a little bit for this time. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Ciao. All right, guys. Just in case, since this one over here has six hours left, let's do this one to see if this if we need anything more from these people. Why to look at the message written on the murder weapon? He, yeah, 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 we know that. This passage from the book, The Prince, by Machiavelli. Nice. Basically, it says that it is okay to kill if it is in, to ensure one's survival. Huh. So we have a killer who feels the need to justify themselves and to murder a victim out of some some sense of survival. Interesting. And you're right, Ace. We now know our killer has read the prints. Let's hope their passion for literature helps us put them behind bars. I'll guess that with all these rich people, that actually isn't going to be that helpful. Like, you guarantee you this guy has. Look at him. Mr. Westville, we know you're a member of the Livingstone Club, and we'd like to ask you a few questions about the recently deceased owner, Jerry Bigwall. Jerry's dead? Don't tell me. Heart attack? Murder, actually. Oh, Jesus. Well, the Livingstone Club is like a second home to me. Obviously, if you're important or wealthy in this city, this is the place to be seen. I spend my time investing my family fortune into the smartest ways possible, and Jerry's Club offers us members a place to talk and trade invaluable information. Secrets worth millions were constantly being exchanged, and I sure hope the club won't close down now that Jerry's dead. Okay, it sounds like insider trading, basically, between rich people. So they have to have a rose is obviously going to be a factor. Miss Tanaka, we'd like to ask you a few questions about the cake you made for the mayor's re-election campaign party. Listen, I was there at the party when the fat guy suddenly died after eating my cake. I know how it looks. I make cakes for all the big events around here, and even if my cakes are to die for, nobody's taken it literally before. So you didn't put those razor blades in the cake? Of course not. That guy was a pig, but I wouldn't throw away my whole career just to kill someone who didn't take the time to appreciate my cake. Alright, that finishes that off. So I gotta wait another six and a half hours. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Alright, folks, let's uh, head back here. Well, I had to cut your victim open to inspect his digestive system in. Ew, jeez, Nate, can you just spare us the details? Nope, I inspected the digestive tract on this man. Obviously, never chewed his food. Unfortunately, that habit has now cost him his life. If he had chewed, he would have noticed the blaze in his cake, and his insides wouldn't have been all torn up. So remember, Jones, always chew your food first. Now, in the cuts in his throat, I found some minute fibers which had the unmistakable fuzzy texture and yellow color of a tennis ball. And obviously these tennis ball fibers couldn't have come from your cake, so they must have already been in your killer's pocket before he got stuck to the murder weapon. And whoever owns tennis balls obviously plays tennis. Interesting. Later at the station. Jerry's Club housed the most important people of the city, and he must have overheard a lot of invaluable secrets. What if such knowledge finally cost him his life? Ace, you're not going to believe this, but your victim was injected with truth serum shortly before his death. Truth serum? Oh, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Anyways, guys, stay tuned before we go to Chapter 2. Learn a little bit more about this. See you guys in a little bit. This has been Pitching ACD. Over and out.